Today's gospel, you may have noticed, had two stories in it. One from a woman who comes to Jesus for help for her daughter, and a second one about the healing of a man who is deaf. Now, both these stories have elements in them in their own way that are disturbing. For the first, Jesus is unkind, to put it mildly, to the woman asking him for help. And in the second, there is a cultural implication that is demeaning to those who are deaf. So I want to address both stories, but first I want to talk about a question that underlies both of these stories, actually all of the scripture that we heard today. It's a question that suggests a takeaway for these readings, what these stories can mean for us in our lives with the anxieties and the cares and challenges and the pain that we all face. And the question is, how fully, how fully do we want to give ourselves to living the way of love that Christ teaches us? Jesus frequently says to people, if you want to follow me, you have to give up everything. You have to lose them yourself. You have to let go of who you think you are. So how much are we willing to let go of to live the way of love? One other way to put this question is this. How much do you want to evolve as an individual or as a species? Clearly, we need to do that. The state of affairs in which we all collectively find ourselves now points to the dire need of humans to become more conscious, more loving, more open to one another, more open to see each other, each person with love as we would see a newborn baby, as precious and vulnerable and good, and in need of feeling connected with one another, because when we're connected, we're in the truth of ourselves. So that question is a golden thread that makes its way through all these stories. So I'm gonna address the second story first, the story of the healing of a man who was deaf. And I couldn't resist addressing this because we are very blessed here at St. Paul's to have a deaf community that worships with us every Sunday at 9 and is part of our community. And just two weeks ago at St. Paul's, we celebrated the feast of two men, Thomas Gallaudet and Henry Winter Sile, one hearing and one deaf. They were Episcopal priests in the 1800s, and they both supported the deaf community. And we also, when we celebrated their feast, gave a blessing to our our deaf community at the 9 a.m. So I didn't want to miss the opportunity to name that many healing stories in the scriptures, like this one, imply that someone who is physically deaf needs to be fixed. That to hear is right and normal, and to not hear is less than, less than whole. It surprises people to know that in deaf culture in America de today, and especially in the last 50 years, that deafness is viewed positively, with pride, as unique and beautiful. When a baby is born into a deaf family that's deaf, there's nothing sad about that. It's a celebration. They see themselves as a particular and beautiful expression of being human. In the first century setting of the gospel, there were outright beliefs that not only were people who had some physical difference less than, but they were being punished by God for some terrible sin that they had done. And this was true of anybody who was physically diverse in any way. These beliefs are widespread across time and in our human conditioning. Sometimes they're blatant, but more often, in society and in ourselves, they're subtle and unseen. And these subtle beliefs diminish our joy of being able to see each person, all people, as God sees them, as precious and beloved and perfect. In the realm of God, in the realm of love, no one needs to be ashamed of who they are, of how they were created, of what particular diverse expression of God that they are. In asking ourselves, how fully do we want to live into the way of love, we might ask, 
if we're willing to notice any subtle or blatant negative ways that we view others because of how they look or some manner of diversity, to catch ourselves in it, to contemplate it, to hold ourselves accountable to it. And even the subtle ways that we view ourselves sometimes, judging ourselves for how we look, for who we are, for how we were uniquely created. We might pray to see as God sees us. Patty Ladd, who is a British scholar and author who's also deaf, said of deaf culture, we celebrate our proud history, our arts, and our cultures. We celebrate our survival. We remember that many of us and our ancestors have suffered at the hands of those who believed we should not be here. We are here to remember them, to pledge, to fight, to end that oppression now for all the world's deaf children and the others still to come. We can apply Patty's sediment to ourselves to notice and hold ourselves accountable for all manner of oppressive thoughts about others that may hold our hearts captive when they arise in us. In the other story in today's gospel, a woman asked Jesus to heal her daughter. And Jesus dismissively responds, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. This is shocking coming from Jesus. If you didn't catch the gist, by children, he is referring to the Jews as the chosen children of God. And by dogs, he is referring to her, the woman. He is telling this desperate mother that his mission is for the Jews alone. We are quite right to feel disturbed and shocked by these insulting words from Jesus. But maybe this disturbance and shock serves a purpose, cracking us open and awakening our heart's attention. It's not a coincidence that the passage right before this in Mark, the one that we heard last week, is Jesus' warning about hypocrisy. He quotes Isaiah saying, people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And in this passage that follows that, we see hypocrisy, not in Jesus' followers, not in other people, but in Jesus. We are allowed here to see Jesus' bare humanity. What a teaching for us. The woman, made courageous perhaps by her love of her child, responds prophetically to his lapse of compassion and rebukes him. She says, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus snaps back into clarity, into the divine, into the divine aspect of his heart and being. He says that her daughter is already healed. The woman has opened him up. Isn't it ironic that when Jesus next pronounces the healing on the deaf man, he says, be opened. This is the healing we all need. Not to be fixed from the diverse expression of God that we are, not to belong to one exclusive group over another, not to be a picture of so-called perfection, like we see in the glossy pages of advertising, but to be open and to see for ourselves the belovedness of every single one, including ourselves. And if Jesus, in his humanity, can lose sight of that belovedness, so can we. So we can take heart and have courage. We can be deeply touched by the humility of the teacher to let his vulnerability be seen. And the profound encouragement here is to be humble enough, to be brave enough, to look for it in ourselves, to see it, to admit it, and to snap back into clarity, to call ourselves back from our mistakes, to open our hearts and our minds and our eyes to the places of hypocrisy in ourselves, and to then remember the divine that is planted in our hearts. How fully 
Do we want to live into the way of love that Christ teaches? We are capable of this. We have the gifts already to do this. And we have the deep compassion and understanding of God, of Jesus Christ, who experienced humanity with us, who came down into the weeds of human fallibility and confusion with us to support us in freely choosing love. We have the full support of divine grace. So may we all choose the humility and courage to be opened, to be radically changed, and to let our souls and our species evolve and to walk in the power and joy of love. Thank you.